Hello. Yesterday was Ash Wednesday, marking the beginning of the season of Lent. The weekly schedule of St Mary's means I'm a day late, but no matter, as the scriptures and the message of Ash Wednesday are a preparation for the way we're encouraged to keep the coming 40 days leading up to Easter. Here's a reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 16. It's part of the Gospel, which is usually read on Ash Wednesday. Jesus said, Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. About 150 years ago, an aristocratic Wiltshire vicar, the Reverend Sir James Erasmus Phillips, wrote a letter to his parishioners from a villa in Rome where he was spending a long winter holiday. I was so thankful, he wrote, to hear that the days of humiliation for the cattle plague were so well observed in the parish. May we all own this chastisement as a loud call to mend our lives and to walk more closely with God. It's hard to imagine a parish priest using such words today, whether from the pulpit or, like the Reverend Sir James, from a sunny piazza. But this season of Lent, if observed seriously, has more than an echo of humiliation in the lamenting of sins, acknowledgement of wretchedness, and pleas for mercy. Yet Jesus, in the closing verses of that Gospel reading, gives it all a more positive slant. Fasting and public displays of penitence, if undertaken to enhance one's reputation for goodness and Christian living, are valueless. But he goes on to point out that fasting in the widest sense, that is, self-denial in such matters as possessions and treasures on earth and selfish pleasure, will bring a different kind of reward. Such fasting will strengthen our love for God and the things of God. There is, of course, more to this than abstaining from the odd glass of sherry or after-dinner mints. These, and more significant gestures, indicate something much deeper, the turning away of our minds and our desires from the things that God hates. These are to be found in the fierce denunciation of the Old Testament prophets and in the teachings and actions of Jesus. Foremost among them are injustice of any kind, hypocrisy and the assumption of inappropriate status. So the season of Lent is an invitation to make a conscious effort to turn towards God, to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. It goes without saying that this requires an effort and will, and what our forebears like the Reverend Sir James would have called amendment of life. Amendment, a new beginning, a change of direction, however you like to think of it, comes from self-examination and penitence. This season, which commemorates the 40 days Jesus spent in the wilderness reflecting on his life and mission, is a reminder that it's never too late to take it seriously. And while we're about it, we ought not only to think about our own failings and peccadillas, but to humble ourselves for the corporate guilt of our times in which we're all bound up, wherever God's people are suffering, in our troubled, disordered and war-torn world. Perhaps as we begin Lent, 
the Reverend Sir James Erasmus Phillips was not so wide of the mark with his reference to days of humiliation. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, says Jesus. The real treasure is the Lord Jesus himself, towards whom we are to direct all our living and in whom we must trust for our forgiveness. Laying up treasure in heaven simply means increasing our hold on Jesus. And that is a task not only for Lent, but for the rest of our lives. Now let us pray. Almighty God, lover of all people, giver of all grace, look mercifully upon us as we acknowledge our sins. Create in us a pure heart and a steadfast spirit, and help us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs>